Oh, we are live now. Let's see here. Let me make sure all is well. All right. Let's see. Okay. Good evening from Thailand, Mr. Tom. How you doing? What's happening? Let's see here. All right. So, leave America ASAP while you still can. I got to tell you, the last month or two, a lot has been happening in the way of uh, people talking to me about their desire to leave America as quickly as possible. And I tell you, I've never been a hater of America. But I think that in these times, there's a hell of a lot going on. And I, I think it's causing people to get stressed out and, you know. People want to come to Thailand anyway, but I'm not talking about leaving and necessarily coming to Thailand. All this, although this is a good, uh, good place to come. Sawati Cup to Korn, Dindi Tonrap, Su Chong, an American in Bangkok, Sagat Malin, Bengai Bang. How are you all doing? Uh, first off, I'd like to give a big shout out to Mr. Carlos, who is on the, his way back to the U.S. For a short while. And also Mr. Bob. Bob W. So thank you very much. Carlos will be back. Uh, but probably not. Uh, fast enough for his liking. Uh, if you'd like to. Show your appreciation for the channel. There are a number of ways you can do uh, do so. Like smashing the like button. Hitting the like button. Subscribing to the channel. Getting some merch from an American in Bangkok.com. Um, and I'll tell you what what really stimulated me to do this stream on this topic is that uh, Richard, who comes into the chat every once in a while, was talking about how he was so happy to be away from America. He, he had landed in Bangkok. He's so glad to be here. And then just yesterday, my buddy, uh, who's in Seattle, said, you know, I can't get out of here fast enough. He didn't want to really go back, but, uh, and he's moving to Cambodia. So there's, I mean, this has been going on now for, really for months, not just a month. But people are telling me, people are messaging me all the time, telling me how they just can't wait to leave. And there's a few things that I, I found in looking online, doing a little bit of research that might interest you. So, um, you know, I was going to title this, uh, this stream, America Gone and Lost Forever, uh, or One Nation Completely Divided. But I think people they just want to they just want to get away now. They're, I think people are just sick of what's going on over there. Uh, you may have heard me say in the past that I get really very little from the United States other than my passport, which cost me 110 bucks every time I have to renew it, or even more. You know, you used to get you used to go in and uh, you needed something notarized. It was free. Then it went up to fifty bucks. And every so often, I do need something notarized. But uh, you know, they they start charging and and okay, whatever. You know. But the point is, is that what are the people getting for their tax dollars in America? And you know, I, you know, I'm a U.S. citizen. Obviously, my kids are a U.S. citizen. And in their cases, I, I think it's a plus because the one thing that nobody really talks about is you get to be able to travel fairly freely. The U.S. passport allows you to be able to travel just to just about anywhere uh, without getting without going through a long process. Um, but in the case of my kids, I was thinking about it and I thought, you know what? 
if they ever make any real money here, any serious money, and I'm talking about, I, I forget what the limit is right now. There's a, a tax treaty with the United States. And I think it's about $110, after $110,000. After about $110,000, they start being taxed. So let's say they made, for whatever reason, they started making two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000. They're going to be taxed in Thailand and also taxed in the United States. And they've never lived there. So how fair is that to them? I mean, you know, like I said, they get they get the freedom that comes along with having that passport as long as you pay for the passport. Other than that, though, I don't know. Um, and maybe you guys have a friend or two, and I've got several, who, for me, over the years, I've talked to people who I've known for a long time, and I've told them stories about here, and they don't believe me a lot of the time. And I'm like, and it's not just me. It's not like they don't believe me. They don't believe the stories. They can't believe it's this good. And, you know, they, they still have that opinion. And maybe if you're an American, you know, I grew up and I always thought, oh, America's a great country. I still think it's a great country. But you know what? It's not as great as people make it out to be. I believe that. I believe now there are so many problems and that's why so many people want to leave. They're sick and tired of dealing with the problems and the problems just seem to get worse. They don't get better. Um, but let's see here. There are always uh, the chowderhead Thailand haters who make stupid, stupid statements like uh, I'd never live in Thailand. All the girls are whores. Um, you can't even get a toaster in that ass backwards country. Uh, do they have electricity in your village? You know, that kind of stupid stuff. These are people who have never even been out of their own country. They've probably never even been out of their own city. And, you know, Thailand's internet, from what I've seen, Thailand's internet is every bit as fast as the internet in the United States and even faster. Uh, the infra infrastructure in many places in Thailand, especially in Bangkok, is as good or better than in the United States. So, you know, this, this idea that Americans, some Americans, I mean, some Americans, you know, they're smart enough to know, but some, they just, they, they grew up, and, and this is the greatest place on earth to live, and we got freedom, and we got this, and we got that. It's not always true. And... In the case of Thailand, I think there's a lot of positives that uh, you don't get in the United States. So let me see what's going on here. Hang on one second. Um, I got to get used to this evening streaming thing. <clears throat> uh, now, for the past two years, I was under the assumption that more and more people from the United States have been renouncing their citizenships. However, in the last two years, the numbers have dram dramatically tapered off. Now, anytime that someone renounces their citizenship, every quarter the IRS comes out um, with a publication that, that states the names of everybody renouncing their citizenships. And these numbers have tapered off, and some of it has to do with COVID, you know, lockdowns. Uh, but, again, almost every single person from the United States, and often in other places as well, they, they have flat out said, I'd rather live in Thailand than live in the United States, especially in these times. Uh, Americans want out and and you know it may be hard for some people to swallow I mean I, I'm never gonna stop loving my country but I don't love a lot of the things that are going on like I said I got numerous friends who they're moving to Thailand uh, Cambodia the Philippines Portugal uh, Ecuador and there are numerous others who are in the process of leaving 
the United States as, as quickly as possible. So that's, that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit here. And um, like I said, the numbers have dropped off in the last two years, but you might be surprised to find out why. All right, so let me just read a little something here. Don't be, don't be shy. Leave a comment. Uh, you can leave a comment in the, in the chat, or you can leave a comment after the fact, whatever you want. Up to you, as they say. Uh, Americans in Europe, and it's not only in Europe, but Americans in Europe are struggling to renounce their U.S. Citizenships, citizenship. Uh, Americans living in Europe have their reasons for wanting to give up U.S. citizenship, but due to the pandemic, many are effectively blocked from doing so, and it's impacting their lives. In March 2020, the U.S. State Department ordered embassies around the world to limit the services they offer to citizens abroad. Uh, embassies have gradually reopened in step with their host countries, but one service remains off the menu at the major embassies in Europe, and that is the process of renouncing American citizenship. Now, if you don't know, renouncing your citizenship does not come free, although I believe it used to be. Now it's $2,350. Uh, for new, nearly two years, Americans have been unable to begin the process of renouncing their U.S. citizenship. But why, when the U.S. allows dual citizenship with many countries, would anyone want to hand in their passport in the first place? Well, that's pretty easy. There, there are numerous reasons, the top one being the taxes and, and also the, the direction of the, the country. But um, this person here, Joshua Grant, is so disenchanted with American politics and wanted wants the right to participate in the political process of their new home country. Originally from Selma, Alabama, Grant has lived in Germany for over a decade and has been attempting to renounce his citizenship since he and his partner married in 2020. Others like United Kingdom's Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Prime Minister at the time, are so-called accidental Americans. U.S. citizens who have spent little to no time in the United States only got their American passport through an accident of birth. That may be my kids. I guess that's what you would say. Uh, Johnson was born in New York while his father was studying at Columbia University. The reason Johnson eventually renounced his citizenship, and far and away the most common reason for it is tax-related, since all U.S. citizens... Even if they have never earned money in the United States and have barely spent any time there, are expected to file an annual tax declaration with the IRS. And recent legislation has made things even more complicated. Uh, the FATCA of 2010 has made it mandatory for foreign banks to report accounts held by U.S. citizens to the IRS or face penalties themselves. Uh, whew. European banks were expected to comply with the FAT, FATCA. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Uh, by 2020, as financial institutions have become stricter about reporting accounts to the IRS in the lead-up to the 2020 deadline, some American citizens abroad have faced a higher tax burden. Other U.S. citizens have found European banks reluctant to allow U.S. citizens to open accounts or even barring them uh, altogether. Hey, Bruce. Uh, good, good evening, everybody. Good, good morning. Good evening. Uh, whatever, whatever else. Uh, coupled with new taxes introduced under ex-president Donald Trump and his successor Joe Biden, it's made the prospect of returning their U.S. passport attractive to many. Hey, uh, Carl, how's it going? I'll answer your question in a minute here. Uh, how many Americans renounce citizenship yearly? The pent-up demand for appointments to renounce citizenship is difficult to calculate, experts say, considering we don't even have the firm numbers on how many Americans undertake the process each year. The government doesn't want to let people know how many people are relinquishing their citizenship. Uh, all right, I already said that about the, uh, the FBI also tracks expatriations in the national 
Instant Criminal Background Check Index. And the FBI and IRS's tallies vary wildly. For example, in 2020, the IRS reported 6,705 expatriations, while the FBI only added 3,764 names to their list. Uh, let's see here. Some say as many as 30,000 expatriation applications would have been filed uh, since March 2020 if embassies had been open for business as usual, given that successful expatriations have ranged between 1 and 6,000 a year since the early 2000s. This would represent an unprecedented increase. So the only reason is basically because the government is keeping people from being able to apply because they're not allowing them to go into the, well, at first it was because of the COVID, supposedly. Joshua Grant says that the delayed expatriation has been more a frustration than a practical issue. He's lived in Germany for more than a decade and has already established permanent residency. It's not so much that I'm impaired, it's more psychological. I just want to move on with my life. More than a year into the process, I really thought I was going to be able to vote in Germany's last election. But for some, the shutdown of applications has had serious financial consequences. Some accidental U.S. citizens living in Europe have had bank accounts closed and mortgages denied as banks come into compliance with FATCA. The Washington Post reported in mid-2020. If they could only renounce their unwanted citizenship, they say things could return to normal. In 2020, the group called the Association of Accidental Americans filed a lawsuit against the State Department in a U.S. district court in Washington, D.C., uh, alleging mishandling of the expatriation process. According to leader Fabien Lahag, the suspension of services for renouncing citizenship, even as embassies resume non-immigrant visa services to foreign nationals, is unconstitutional. Giving up nationality or voluntary expatriation is a natural right which all men have. The U.S. administration is not above the laws and Constitution of the United States. It cannot deprive us of the fundamental right of renunciation. Supposedly this lawsuit has made an impact, but um, uh, apparently they say they are openly re, uh, open to resolving this dispute. However, uh, it hasn't happened yet. And this was in November, this was written in November 2021. Um, that's why none of the major embassies offer expatriation appointments, even as the risk of COVID has subsided in several European countries. The spokesperson said the department wouldn't comment, since this is the subject of ongoing litigation. So once again, it's like, well, sorry, but we're not going to tell you. We don't have to tell you. We're, we're, yeah, we don't have to tell you. Now, let me continue here uh, with what, what I have in my notes. Now, if we think about this, okay, first of all, you, and I know there are people out there who have heard this before, and, you, and some people may even believe this. Why would I go to Thailand? Why would I go to Portugal? Why would I go to one of those places? Those are third world countries. Oh, I don't need to go there. America's the greatest place in the world. Hey, Daniel, it's the greatest country in the world. Well, not really. It, it may have, a, it may be the land of opportunity. I can, I can agree with that. The United States is supposedly the richest and best country to live in on the planet. However, it is also a country fraught with social, political, and economic problems. And while it's easy to say every country has its share of problems, uh, the United States problems seem to be increasing by the day. Uh, the healthcare system is a joke. Did you know 
Maybe some of you know, maybe you don't. Did you know that one in three GoFundMe campaigns are to pay for medical bills? In the United States, it is the most expensive health care system uh, with the worst health outcomes. And in America, the most is spent... The, people spend uh, the most per person in the world. So the health care alone is just one issue. Now... Uh, Carl, uh, would I ever consider renouncing? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm leaning towards probably not, because I don't really have a good reason. Um, you know, I, I guess if, they, if the United States was to say, hey, we are going to make it... Uh, we're going to we're going to make a law that says you're not allowed to expatriate unless you pay a $5,000 fee. You have to pay a $5,000 fee or a $3,000 fee, whatever it is. I'm not talking about a $50 fee, but you know, something that is a couple thousand dollars where they just say, "Well, if you want to uh, permanently expatriate, you have to pay this fee uh and then if you want to renounce your citizenship, you're going to have to pay the additional fee, which it's $2,350, but then you probably need some kind of a lawyer to help you with that. So you may end up spending three, four $4,000 to get this all done. Uh, and while for some people that may not be a problem, that's a lot of money. Uh, you know, and then you have to, yes... The reason you want to get a lawyer, although you can do it by yourself, the reason you want to get a lawyer is because you don't want to have to pay some kind of an exit tax. You don't want to have to pay some tax that they figure out you owe. You want to get that all straightened out and all squared away so that there are no additional problems and you're not going to have to pay some fine of $2,000, $3,000, $10,000, whatever it might be. According to MedRx IV report, Life expectancy in the United States is actually declining. From 78.9 years of age in 2019 to 76.6 .6 years of age in 2021, Americans have a lower life expectancy than in Lebanon and Cuba. Also, I'm sure we've heard about how Europeans get so much time off, they get so much vacation time every year, and how the uh, uh, Americans get, you know, two weeks. Maybe they get three if they're lucky, but, you know, a lot of places you get one week your first year, and then maybe if it's three years, you get two weeks, something like that. Generally, and I'm speaking in generalizations, uh... Americans generally work longer hours than in many, many countries. They're somewhere in the middle. And they get less time off. Uh, the United States has fewer hospital beds per capita than Turkey and Brunei. Bo! Politicians... You can say what you want. No longer work for the people. They work to stay in power and to serve their own needs. I don't care if they're Republicans or Democrats. It makes no difference to me. My opinion of politicians from the age of, say, 40 to now, that's 20 years, has decreased uh, year by year. And I don't respect any of them. Uh, if there's a 1% in the group that are legit and they really care about the people, and well, I don't see them very often. So, you know, I'm going to stick with the fact that, to me, they're all a bunch of shills. They're all out for themselves. They're out to keep their, their jobs. And, and that's it. They don't care about what's going on with the people. And, of course, you know, you got exceptions, but that's what I believe. Uh, so that's not a good thing. There is a growing, and I know that 
the older folks in the stream know what I'm talking about. There is a growing sense of entitlements amongst the people, the younger generation. Uh, as I was talking about um, the health insurance leave something to be desired. We, we face exorbitant health insurance premiums if you are in the United States, and there's really no way around it. Uh, if you don't pay them and you got to go to the hospital, you're screwed. Uh, then you factor in things like racism, the PC movement, the Me Too me movement, the mainstream media, the illegal immigrants, homelessness, shitting in the streets, addiction to hardcore drugs, and all the associated crimes that come with that. Mental illness, suicide. And let's not forget about our politicians and uh, business persons selling out to China. Yes, and victimhood. Oh, I'm the victim. How could you do this to me? <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, my Lord. You know, I mean... People aren't made the same way they used to be made. So you got all these things going on. Is it any wonder that more people are leaving the United States aside from these past two years? And, and I'm telling you, out of about 25 people that I talked to in the last month, Every None of them have said, oh, I got to get back to America. I love it there. It's such a great place. I mean, I know people, they're older. They're very set in their ways. They're, they're just good people. And they were so happy to stop working because now they don't have to be in that environment where if they say the wrong thing, they could lose their career. Yeah, I'm not even talking about the Hollywood celebrities and all that kind of stuff. I, I really don't care about them because they are not the norm. I'm talking about everybody else. So it does not surprise me that so many people uh, are leaving the country. And I suspect in the coming years it's going to get the numbers are going to get higher and higher and higher. And not everybody's going to move to Thailand. As much as this place is a, a very good place to live, you know, it's one thing to come here and party and get drunk and chase women and do your thing here. And, you know, you come, you're a you know, three-week millionaire. It's another thing to live here. It's completely different because you, your mindset changes. And, you know, if you've got a girlfriend and you end up marrying her, if you're a younger guy, you end up marrying the girl uh, or you end up having a couple of kids like I did. Uh, it completely changes the way that you look at the country. And, you know, the, the, the big thing here is that it is fairly safe. Despite what some people might say. You know, I'm not on, uh, what is that, I uh, uh, I don't live there. I'm not looking for any problems. I don't go around doing that. You know, uh, especially with my family was with me. We're already in the toilet, just waiting for the flush. Um, that was one of the other things that I did read about in the articles that I looked into. Is that, uh, I wonder if it's in here, if I can find it real quick. Uh, one of the guys said... America is dead already. Now, that, that's the big question to me. The big question is, okay, so America is in the toilet. We know that. The one thing that this, this uh, article that I read, uh, and I think I watched a video, where, uh, accompanying video, the guy said, if America is to come back, it's not going to come back in a couple of years. It's going to take a decade or two. It's not going to come back the next presidency in another four years. It's going to take at least a decade or two decades. And quite honestly, I don't see it happening. I just don't. Now, maybe when some of these uh, politicians like Pelosi and... 
you know, Schumer and some of these old timers, when they start croaking, maybe things will change. But then you got people like, uh, what's her name, uh, AOC, and you got, you know, what's that other one, the uh, Ilhan or whatever her name is. You know, you got the group of them. These are not the people we want running our country. Uh, it's not what I think, at least. You know, so I think the United States is uh, in a world of trouble. Now, I, I was looking into something. I thought, well, you know, if I was to renounce my citizenship, if by chance I did, and I'm, believe me, I'm not even, I'm not anywhere near that. I'm not even thinking, oh, yeah, that could happen. I guess it could, but it's a long shot. But I thought about it. I thought, what about my Social Security? What are they going to do with that? Well, guess what? In a rare instance of not screwing up the yin-yang, if you are eligible to collect Social Security and your renunciation process is done properly, it will in no way affect any payment or collection entitlement after expatriation. expatriation. Your Social Security number will remain in place you're just not taxed as a U.S. citizen any longer. Keep the good and get rid of the bad cross-border tax problems. So, that's something that, uh, you know, hey, at least they're letting you do that. We got to get rid of the trash. Let's get rid of the trash. There we go. Ron DeSantis, you mean? He looks like the only one that's not insane. Uh, and, you know, I just saw another another thing. Uh, I can't even remember what the publication was. Uh, but it had to do with another virus being found in, guess where? I'll give you one guess where it was found. China. China. It was found in China. Uh, now... Apparently this is, you know, it shouldn't be deadly, but uh, the way that they're talking about this monkeypox, I mean, not only in America, but here. And, you know, one thing that's really is kind of puzzled me, because we're almost, what's the, what is this? This is, we're almost at a month and a half since the mask mandate was uh, suspended. It's been a month and a half. And the majority of places that I've been, it's always the ties. They're always wearing their mask. Once in a while, you get one that doesn't wear them. But the majority of them are wearing their mask. They just will not take those masks off. Now, foreigners are walking around. They don't. You know, they just don't care. I think, you know, after a while, it's like, how many how many vaccinations do you need? And, and how long are we going to, um, you know, continue to do this? The other day, uh, I think it was when I went to the IDK cafe, the I Don't Know cafe. I came back and I was contemplating how I was going to get back. And then I just looked and there's the bus stop and it said... Here's the 514. It goes right to where I need to go. I said, hey, you know what? I don't have to walk anywhere else. I don't have to go from uh, from the subway to the SkyTrain or subway to, to get a taxi and then go. All I have to do is just jump on the bus, air-conditioned bus. I was like, you know what? I'll wait. And about five minutes later, the bus pulled up. 
I rode the entire way. There's about two people other than myself on the bus, and then the driver, and then the ticket lady. And my stop comes up. Drops you off right in front of uh, Bonkibi Market. So I make my way towards the door, and the ticket lady says to me, you know, you really should put your mask on. And I didn't say anything. And she said, you know, if you if there had been people in here, I would have asked you to put your mask on or you would not have been able to ride on this bus. And I said, well... And at the, then by the time I got off, there was like one other person on the bus besides the driver and her and me. I said, well, fortunately... I tried to be nice about it. I said, fortunately, there's nobody on the bus. There's one person all the way in the back. I'm sitting all the way in the front. I said, are you scared? Yeah, I'm so scared. She was like, I'm scared. I said, how many vaccines have you had? Five. And I said, you've had five vaccines. You're a middle-aged woman. She looked to be healthy. You know, I mean, fairly healthy. And she's scared shitless. And all I could think is, maybe instead of just listening to the news, you've got to do some research in publication, in medical publications, online. You can do that. It's very easy. But I think most of the people, they're, they're either apathetic, or they don't have the time, or they don't have the intelligence. You know. But I just found it strange. There's one person on the bus. They're 50 feet away from me. The lady's like 25 feet away from me until I walked up. And she was worried about me. When's it going to end? And this has to do with politics. The politicians could very easily come out and say, Hey guys, it's time. Take your mask off. Let's get on with life. They could do this, but they don't want to. Especially here now. Now you know that uh, technically, Pryud is supposed to give up his position on the 24th of this month. I don't think it's going to happen. And there is supposed to be the vote for the next prime minister who, <laughs> for the position that uh, Anutin wants to fill, he is going to be someone on the ballot. He's going to be a person on the ballot. Now, I cannot see him ever getting enough votes to win. But, you know, this is the thing. And like you're saying, listen, DeSantis, say what you will about him, but, you know, something happens. And, and I do think that, you know, there are some genuinely good politicians out there, good people. But I think they get put in this position and it's like, okay, so I've got to choose. It's just like choosing between, I hate to say this, but it's sort of like choosing between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump for some people. For me, it was it was a piece of cake. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't vote for her. But for some people, they're like, eh, I gotta just, uh, choose the lesser of two evils. You know. And she lost, so we know who people were voting for. Um, but that's kind of the position they get into. Hey, if I do this, so-and-so, this group over here, and this uh, ten groups is going to be pissed off at me. But if I choose this side, th there's going to be even more backlash. And I think they get into that position. I think the expectations are very high. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be a politician in this day and age. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Well... I have not seen any proof in the news 
that says you need to get a jab every four months and that's the safest way to proceed. The new Bangkok governor. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I really try to... Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. You are the first. Hopefully not the last. I'm not going to say you're my everything, though. Guess who that comes from? Barry White. Barry White. <clears throat> Barry White, baby. Yeah, I, I can't. He's got too deep of a voice. You're, what, what did he say? You're the fat, You're the first. You're the last. You're my everything. Or something like that. I forget. What's the name of that song? <laughs> anyway. DeSantis chose freedom in, in Florida. Well, yeah, this is a th another thing. Florida's doing just fine. Why is it that Florida and Texas seem to be doing fine? They seem to be doing fine. You know. Well, yeah, that's another thing, Andy. Um, you know. You got the wrong... I mean, look at... I guarantee you that um, Biden, for all his blubbering, blundering, stumbling, um, for all that, he's got people behind him that uh, who knows what he's beholden to them for. I mean, you know, and that's the thing, you never know. You just don't know. And, you know, that's why I, I really don't like to say it, but that's why I just try not to give a shit. I don't want to care too much about anything. You know? Like I always say, friends and family and things that are very, very important that, that are life-changing, okay, I care. Other than that, I just can't. I don't care if so-and-so says something or, you know... Kim Kardashian's big inflated ass had a problem. She sat on a needle and it popped. It, I, I don't really care. It doesn't affect me, you know. Uh, I believe here in Thailand, uh, the coronavirus is considered a communicable disease or something. What was it that they said? I forget what they called it. Um, corn? <laughs> corona? Virus is now a. Let's see if it comes up here. Yeah. You know, there's so much on this. Uh... Oh, here we go. They're still worried about it here. They're still so worried about it. I don't know why. Thailand situation update. It doesn't tell me anything. Oh, okay. Here it is here. The National Communicable Disease Committee has agreed to change its description of or classification of COVID-19 from dangerous communicable disease to disease under surveillance starting October 1st 2022. This is the same level as influenza, malaria, and dengue fever. In addition, the committee has also agreed to adapt the medical treatment policies and will allow private hospitals and clinics to provide antivirus medications, which will be in effect from September 1st onward. So that's a good step. Now, what does that mean for the... Um, what's it called? The uh, emergency decree. When's that going to go by the wayside? He's got the CDC dropping quarantine restrictions. Um, you got, you know, in Thailand, they're changing the classification of the virus. So, you know, I think we're coming out of it. But that that's neither here nor there, really, when it comes to why people want to leave America. Okay, so now we get through the coronavirus. People in the United States get through it. That's great. Fantastic. We got through it. All right. You know, 
finally, two and a half years of shit, thanks to the Chinese and whoever else. Uh, but that's there's still all these other problems. I mean, there there's serious, serious problems in the United States. And I'd say that the only reason some people don't leave is because money. You know, let's face it. You don't got money. You don't got a way to drum up the, the duckies in another country. Then it's going to be hard for you to live there if you're not of retirement age. Mr. Manash, what's happening? Got all the Aussies in here now. And, you know, I, I, I still will say this. And I was, this is another title I thought of. But I cannot see myself ever living in America again. I can see myself staying there for a year, um, you know, to spend with my family, uh, you know, maybe maybe living somewhere else, uh, like in South America, somewhere like Ecuador or something. I can see that kind of stuff happening, but I can't I can't see myself staying. Okay, I'm gonna move there, stay there forever. I'm gonna die in America. I just don't think that's gonna happen. I go home for a month, then I need to get out of there. You see what I mean? This is the whole demeanor. This is the same demeanor that damn near everybody in the United States I talk to has. And, you know, there, there are people that are in, good, in a good position. They're not working anymore. They, they're not really beholden to anybody. All they have to do is just... You know, be cordial to people and not say something, you know, like, I don't have to call you that. I can call you whatever I want. You don't get into that kind of predicament. And you're going to be fine, whether it's the United States or anywhere else. Thailand benefits in a nutshell. Great weather, nice people, interesting culture, reasonable cost of living. Uh yeah, there, there's one that you kind of left out of there, and that is that you don't got people all in your business wondering everything that you're doing, and if they are, it's just basically small talk. You know. But I don't know, you know, sometimes, you, sometimes I guess, depends on where you are. If you're in a little village or something like that, you could have people that are, you know, like, you know that that guy over there, he does this and he does that. He's got this lady and that lady, and what? he's been married fourteen times. You know, for all you know, they're talking about you. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I think here I'm 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 known as the grump. I, I don't want to be bothered by anybody. I I don't. That's the, it's not that I'm really. That's not what it is. But it's just that I just don't. I don't have any reason to be hanging out with people. Well, that may be true. That may be true. Um, but for now, I think it's, uh, it's fine. Life is, life is like a box of chocolates. We escape to the beach every other weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I understand, uh, Tom. And, and that's why, you know, you got to say it. And... But there are people who are, they are in the daily grind. They are going to these places or they're working in some kind of a corporate, corporate uh, uh, atmosphere. And uh, John is a perfect example. You know, he was teaching and he told me, oh, I had to watch everything I said. If I said the wrong thing, my buddy uh, who's moving to Portugal, he works for a company and uh, he's like a, a manager of this uh, food company. And, you know, he, he tries to push the, <laughs> he tries to push the limits of what he can say, but he, he backs off right at the very end and, and says, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Oh, he doesn't care. He'll say anything. It, it doesn't matter to him. <laughs> he, he could care less, but he knows that if he goes a little bit too far, he can get himself in trouble. 
And I think that's, you know, the greed, Orwellian nonsense. Yeah, I mean, uh, read 1984. You know, and, and the greed, this is something, and I talked about this the other day. Um, when I watched that Woodstock ni uh, 1999, the people were getting pissed off because they were paying top dollar for stuff. I mean, they were paying outrageous prices. Not only to get into the place, but for food, for hot dogs, and then they'd go to the porta potties, and the porta potties were overflowing with shit. And then there was water leaks, and so there was shit and water all over the, with mixed with mud. And they're walking around, and they didn't even know it. They're drinking water uh, from the spigot, and the spigot's got the water was tested, and it's got fecal matter in it. And then they start learning. Oh, they start finding out. It's three days. They start figuring out. Hey, you know we're getting ripped off here, and people started getting pissed. And at the end, you know they they tried to burn the the whole place down but basically the reason that they got so pissed is because of the what was happening how they were being treated by the corporations that's what they felt it was big business here they are they just want to listen to some music and you know have a good time hey if i got to pay a buck or two for water that's fine you know this is almost 25 years ago uh, but, you know, when you got to pay $14 for a bottle of water <laughs> and you go into the shitter and, and you can't, you can't, you know, you'd say it's three days. If you're staying there on the grounds and you got to take a dump, uh, there's nowhere to take a dump. What are you supposed to do? You know, go behind the porta potty, bring your wet wipes. I don't even know if they had wet wipes back then. Uh, but, you know. Thank you very much there, Mr. Andy. I appreciate that. Choke me to you. You are the first super chat of the day. Uh, let's hope some stay in the United States have to pay for the system. Then. Well, the thing is, as long as they work there and put into the pension, what does it matter where they live afterwards? Is it Australia where you can't collect a pension if you leave the country for a certain amount of time? Or is that the UK? Or I forget where it is. Good morning, good morning. Patrick, hey, how you doing? What's happening, Patrick? Thank you very much. Yep, I'm hearing this across the country. It's sad, but I still love our country. I'll always be an American. I will always love the country. But it's it's kind of like oh, don't don't say nothing bad about my country. Yet yeah, that's just like saying, you know, um, hey, you're fat. You can't say that. You're gonna go to jail for that. You're fat shaming me. You know, no. Like, if the country has got problems, you gotta address the problems. You gotta say, hey, we gotta fix these things. And then, you know, you got some, you got these people like Pelosi and I forget who it was the other day and passing all these bills. The Democrats, you know, they want to spend all this money and that, that country is billions of dollars in debt. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to go back to the IDK cafe. I'm going to wait probably for, um, uh, Mr. Longhorns to come in before I go back, but I don't know. I might go again. Uh, if someone does collect a pension, don't they need to have an account in their country? Most expats just use direct deposit in U.S. Yeah, but that's easily rectified. Nowadays, it's very easy. You can uh, you can use something like Wise, used to be transfer Wise. You can do bank transfers for a couple of bucks. Nowadays, it's three bucks, six bucks. Um, and yeah, I mean, people are tired of that grind. And what I have heard several times over is that approximately 40% of the people who lost their jobs 
will never go back or who, or who were told to go back and work at home. Hello, Ivan. Ivan from Russia. 40% uh, of those people will never go back. Out of all the people that lost their jobs or moved to work at home, the people will, 40% will continue to work at home. They'll find a way to make ends meet and work from home. Um, which I think actually could be beneficial in, in many ways. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know, I would just think, if you think about it, um, I wish there was a way that with schools kids could get as much out of their education uh hey thank you pork rhino we're giving florida a try now but maybe later we'll, <laughs> we'll try thailand listen i always like Flor uh, florida i've always loved it there the only thing that i don't really like is the humidity other than that um i, I like pretty much everything about it you know uh i don't have any beef and the, the thing is is that i'm a little different than some of the people now who are coming over people who've been here for a couple of years um because when i came over i didn't have any beef with the united states i didn't have any i didn't have a care in the world when it came to oh my god there's the me too movement oh there's the pc movement oh now we can't say this we can't say that how do we call somebody how do we refer to them you know, there was none of that stuff going on. When I came over here, it was like, I got to get out of here because I need to have a life. You know, I want to have a life. I don't want to just be, you know, my life was numbers. Uh, numbers, making sure I'd get documents for printing. And I knew the places where I had to send them. I would send them out. And then it would be like, all right, is everything okay? Yes. And then somebody else would come in and I'd have to do the numbers. How much am I going to make on this? And that was day in and day out. I was working 70 hours a week. Uh, and it was just, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted to live a little bit. Tedeschi Trucks. Oh, wow. $12 slice of pizza, $7 bottle of water. Wow, that's crazy. Were they good? They had to be good. Um, you know, Tom, it, the last experience I had with that was a couple of years ago, but I do know some people who have done it. And the way to do it is either you go to a place that is known to open for foreigners, or you go to your embassy and you get, uh, you get proof of, uh, your address and, uh, and, and then you go back and they, they notarize it. Then you go back to the bank, and then they will allow you to open up uh, uh, the bank account. So it's not impossible or anything. And I do think that um, uh, getting a bank account here is important. Great show. Okay. Especially over 60s as the younger brigade are ahead of the game. Realize the folly of working to make others rich. Well, they realize that, but then they want everything given to them. At least in the United States, a lot of them want stuff given to them. Well, why don't I get this? Why can't I have that? Why can't I have... Well, because you can't. <laughs> you ain't getting it for free, you know. I am totally politically incorrect, and that makes me correct. Well, I figured you probably were if you're watching me. <laughs> I went to Bangkok Bank, and it was fine. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bangkok Bank tends to be one of the better ones. Um, now, uh, in, in Pattaya, I know of a Bangkok Bank that actually you have to put money in the bank, and it's only like 500 baht or something, but you also have to pay them a fee so they'll open the account for you. And I was like, wow, how much is the fee? It's like 3,500 baht, 3,600 baht. I was like, that doesn't sound right. I didn't open it because I don't really need it, but that's kind of what the they will do. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's it's one of the easier places to get in, but you still might need to get 
you know, your proof of address uh, and get it notarized at the, the embassy. But people go in all the time. They don't, they don't have to provide that stuff. So it really depends. But um, I think it's important to get one. And that's why, I mean, I've got like five. five I think I have five accounts. All with different banks. And I don't keep much money in them. But I keep enough. <laughs> and, um, and there's a reason why. Because if, one, if I have a problem at one, well, then maybe I won't have another, a problem at another one. Maybe I will. If it's, it has to do with the, the United States and, and paperwork and stuff. And I did a video a long time ago where uh, some girl starts copying every page in my passport. And I said to her, what are you doing? Why are you taking copies of all my passport?" And, you know, I was like, you need to be able to tell me why. And she couldn't tell me what. Duh, 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 duh. And I got pissed. And I said, you need to figure this out. And finally the manager goes, listen, I just need these pages. She got a couple pages. You know, the page with, like, your visa and with your, you know, the front page. And, you know, the, what do you call it, the TM, what is it, TM6? Which I don't think, is it TM6? TM6, I don't think they even... They're not even using that now. I thought they were going to cancel that, last I heard. Digital Nomad says they want their freedom to travel and value time more than money. Well, that might be a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> you know. And, and what, what my thing is, is that I think that some people who are younger, they think they got plenty of dough when really they don't. Because they have no clue about what's going to happen in the future. And they're, you know, and that's why you like when somebody tells me, I'm 25 and I'm sick of being here in the United States. I'm tired of it. I hate this place. Okay, so then get a job overseas. That's what you should do. Find a job overseas. Get the job before you come over. And then once you got the job, come on over. Don't come over and say, I'm going to be in I got big tits. I'm going to be an Instagram influencer. I'm going to make plenty of dough. Well, if that's the case, do it before you move. Government appropriate greed. Yes, they do. Cash will go with your maybe mainly card. What do you just think? Um, yeah, you're probably right. Hey, I, I, one thing. Then I went to the grocery and I thought, oh, I'm going to bring my wallet and I thought what do I need my wallet for I don't need my wallet so I just use the just use the the bank app and you pay with that which is another thing like in the United States it seems like they're a little bit behind when it comes to that kind of stuff it's hard to know how much you need to retire at 35 or 40 like this whole retire early movement well yeah um I mean, you know, you never know how long you're going to live. That's the problem. Personally, I don't think I'm going to live past 30. And I, and I have. Somehow. Um, but, you know. What are you going to do? You just do the best you can. You keep marching on. You know? And that's about it. Uh, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? Well, you know, uh, I guess the only thing just to, uh, to, to, else to say is that um, when the government starts doing things like pur purposely slowing down, now they may have slowed down these renun uh, renunciations in time to catch up. I don't know. Nobody knows. They're not going to tell us. They wouldn't tell us that, you know. They don't have to tell you anything. That's that's the whole thing. But they could have just kept that department closed because they want to make sure that they catch up before they open up. Or they could have just shut it down because they know that every day that nobody can apply, um... Maybe it means X number of people. If it's, say, 7,000 in a year, let's say 7,300, then what's that? That's 20 a, 20 a day. 
So if they if they're closed for two weeks, three hundred people uh, expatriate. Br bring him over here for me, will you? Stick him in my arms. This little pain in the ass. Come here. See? He's got to do the little love bites. All right. You can go. Get out of here. All right. Well, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And, and it makes it that much harder. And it takes, you know, think about it. Every, every day that goes by is, uh, let's say, 20 people that can't apply. And then that slowing down the system to their speed makes, maybe makes them some extra dough, saves them some money, and, you know. You retired at uh, 35, but was forced to from the fire department. Wow. At 35. Well, I hate to tell you this, but the government's got you by the short hairs. There's not a whole hell of a lot you can do, you know. I, I still think about all the people, all the celebrities who are, if Trump wins the election, I'm leaving America. And these people, most of them, I'm sure they have more than enough dough to move. And guess what? They didn't move. So that tells me something about them. They don't want to move. America is for the 1% now. I will say this. If you remember the group, the Go-Go's, I'm sure that some of you older folks, uh, which make up the majority of my stream, you know what I'm talking about. The Go-Go's. Belinda Carlisle, the singer from the Go-Go's, has a house in Bangkok. So there you go. Andrew Henderson. <laughs> you know, he comes out with some good information. Um, but my buddy hates him. My buddy absolutely hates him. Oh, my God. And I like what he has to say. I don't always like his presentation. He's a little too polished for, for my taste. You know, a little too, uh, I don't even know how to say it. But, uh, yeah, a little too polished. Uh, I was meeting with some bankers. Uh, uh, I had to meet with some bankers. And I was, I just happened to take a stroll around. And uh, I was thinking that... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, he is the nomad capitalist. As I am the um, an American in Bangkok, he is the nomad capitalist. My buddy, my buddy uh, actually contact. I have a buddy who contacted him. This is not the buddy who doesn't like him, but my buddy contacted him, and he said that basically the way that it works is you might get one session where you talk to Andrew Henderson. Once you talk to him, that's it. He puts you through, if you're going to move to Ecuador, he puts you through to his little little group of people in Ecuador that they probably do the same thing, and, you know, they get a cut, or he gets a cut. You know, that's how it works. He, like, introduces you to those people, and he probably has people set up, you know, in a lot of places. Something I ate today, man. Oof. I can't die soon. I have more of the world to see. You know, I've been to about 50 countries. And I can honestly say there's not a whole lot of places that I really, really feel the need or desire to go. I just don't really, doesn't really matter to me if I go or not, Andy, but I do understand what you mean. And it's, and Scott Mallon has long re recommended having a backup plan, a plan B and plan C. 
So maybe he got that from me. I don't know. That's okay. Flattery. Uh, what is it? The uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. I forget what it is. <laughs> He's got some good stuff up. He he does. But you know, it's, it's a, I've got my house in uh, Albania. You know, he's always talking about all his houses. I don't know. He seems he seems all right, you know. I wouldn't give him any of my money, but that's just me. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. Let's see here. What, what else was I going to say here? Uh, besides, thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you for all the donations, contributions, and everything else, because, uh, believe me, it helps. It always does help. So, right now, we are all finished. Kajokon. Kapkun Tukkon Samrapkan Rapchom. You know what that means? Thank you for watching. Dule Tue Engdue. Very easy. That's very easy. It means when you say do let to ang, it means take care of yourself. Um, and what else? I guess that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, we we help. You know, and I I do. You know, he's he's polished, but I like how he does his presentation. And there are some things I like, and some things that you know I'm like, eh. But you know. That's just my own personal thing. Um, but he's always, you know, we help, what is it? We help uh, uh, seven and eight figure and sometimes nine and ten figure entrepreneurs. For some reason, I have a, I have a real, I kind of doubt that he gets ten figure millionaires. Is that ten? No, that would be, that would be a billionaire. I, ha I just don't think that billionaires are contacting him for advice. You know? But I don't remember what he says. Seven or eight. I think it's seven or eight. And sometimes nine and ten. Anyway, it, it, it's good stuff. Tom, you take it easy. Steven, drop in every so often. CIA killed Jim Thompson. Supposedly. I don't know. Who knows? He might have wandered off into the jungle with some Malaysian chick. You know, Wesley, thank you. Andy, of course, take care. Fire dude, Gabe, everybody else, thank you very much. And uh, Kanina, thank you. That is all. I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.